Hi everyone, and welcome to Truth Over News. A week ago, on July 4th, no less, Judge Terry Doughty of the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Louisiana handed down a stunning judgment which severely castigates and rebukes Joe Biden and his administration for censoring Americans. Judge Doughty has ordered that the Department of Health and Human Services, its secretary Xavier Becerra, Fauci's NIAID, Surgeon General Vivek Murthy, the CDC, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre, the Department of Justice, the FBI, the FBI's censorship apostle Elvis Chan, the Department of Homeland Security, its head Alejandro Mayorkas, the State Department, and many, many others must immediately cease all censorship activities. This is without doubt the most important judgment upholding constitutional rights in a long time. So it should come as no surprise that Biden's DOJ, which also happens to be one of the named subjects in the judgment, has already issued its notice of appeal. We've analyzed the judgment, its ramifications, as well as Biden's prospects on appeal. For the past year, we've been regularly updating you on the progress of a lawsuit brought by the Attorneys General of Louisiana and Missouri accusing the Biden administration of colluding with social media companies to censor Americans. The essence of the accusation is that the federal government used COVID as an excuse to shut down free speech on any number of topics ranging from lockdowns and masks to the so-called vaccines. The lawsuit reached its preliminary highlight last week when federal judge Terry Doughty described what had been done by the federal government as arguably the most massive attack against free speech in United States history. The judges ordered that the Biden administration, including a long list of departments, agencies, and individuals, must immediately stop communicating with social media companies, which is how all these agencies and individuals pushed the censorship regime in the first place. As a result, the State Department had to cancel its weekly meeting with Facebook as well as future meetings pending what they call further guidance. This prompted Elon Musk to ask the obvious question, what goes on at these weekly meetings? Why is it so important that the State Department needs to have 52 meetings a year with Facebook? Whatever it is, Biden's people think it is so crucially important that they have already issued their notice of appeal. But before we get into that, let's take a closer look at the judgment itself, which spans 155 pages and includes a litany of examples of federal government interfering in the First Amendment rights of Americans. Perhaps the first point of note is that Judge Doughty issued his judgment on July 4th. That was not a coincidence, as is highlighted by the fact that the judge cites George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, and Thomas Jefferson. Those quotes go back to the reason there is a First Amendment in the first place, and also the reason why it's at the top of the list of amendments. You cannot have a free country if people are not allowed to speak freely, and the First Amendment therefore prohibits any government interference by policing speech. The essence of free speech in the United States is that you can say whatever you like short of shouting fire in a crowded theater and causing a panic. The exact words used by Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes in Schenck in the United States in 1919 were, the most stringent protection of free speech would not protect a man in falsely shouting fire in a theater and causing a panic. The true meaning of this exception is often overlooked. What is said must both be untrue and it must also cause a panic, meaning that the effects must be immediate, like people trampling all over each other to get out of the theater. Posting something on Facebook can inherently not cause a panic because people aren't sitting in a crowded theater but in the comfort of their own living rooms. With the legal basics established, the judgment then dives into the many, many instances where the US government did not follow the law during these past few years. Judge Doughty picked out 25 instances of government interference in free speech 
And we'll look at some of these examples here. Right off the bat, after Biden assumed the presidency, Biden's digital director for the COVID-19 response team, a man called Clark Humphrey, emailed Twitter to ask for a Robert Kennedy Jr. tweet about the so-called vaccine to be removed. Recall that the government has no role in policing speech. You just can't have White House officials telling Twitter to take down this or that tweet, especially as in this case, a tweet from someone who is now Biden's political opponent. The fact that this started happening as soon as Biden became president shows us that this was something they had prepared and planned for. A few days later, again, this is right after Biden became president, Biden's deputy assistant, a man called Rob Flaherty, told Twitter to remove a parody account which was linked to Finnegan Biden, who is Hunter Biden's daughter and Joe Biden's granddaughter. The demand stated, cannot stress the degree to which this needs to be resolved immediately, and please remove this account immediately. Twitter suspended the parody account within 45 minutes of Flaherty's demand. Again, that is completely outside the constitutional bounds. You can't use the office of the president to shut down speech which you do not like. At around the same time, Twitter complained to Flaherty that it had recently been bombarded with censorship requests from the White House and that in a given day, last week for example, we had more than four different people within the White House reaching out for issues. Recall, this was right after Biden took office. To alleviate the problem of constant censorship demands from the White House, Twitter set up a partner support portal for expedited review of flagging content for censorship and asked for a designated list of authorized White House staff to enroll in that portal. Truly Orwellian style industrialized censorship. And it wasn't just Twitter. In another example cited by Judge Doughty, Biden's deputy assistant Flaherty accused Facebook of causing political violence because Facebook did not censor allegedly false COVID-19 claims. Facebook told Flaherty that being vaccine skeptical is not against Facebook's policies. So Flaherty demanded a meeting to discuss Facebook's policies. Again, at the risk of repeating ourselves, the federal government is prohibited from imposing speech policies. Yet that is exactly what Biden's people were doing. As a result, Facebook agreed to restrict visibility of vaccine skeptical content even though it did not violate any policies. They did this at the behest of Biden's White House, an absolutely clear and unambiguous case of direct censorship orchestrated by the federal government against Americans.